What's up again, everybody? We are like one week away from the final release of the D&D Dice Masters Trouble in Waterdeep set. Because we are so close to the launch, I thought I would make a video of my top five favorite cards from this upcoming set. I've had a little while to think about it, to mess around with some of the cards in this set, and there are five standouts that I have messed around with more than any that I have played and enjoyed my time with more than any of the other cards. And this was actually kind of tricky to do because there were like a ton of cards in this set that I have really enjoyed so far. Narrowing it down to just five was trickier than most because so many of these cards fell into that, wow that was really fun, category. But if you have watched any of my videos, I bet you you could probably pause and write down in the comments what five you think I picked. You might get most of them right, I'll be honest. So starting with number five, this is one you may not actually guess, but this is a really cool card. This is Drow Mercenary Hired Blade, a three cost bolt character with that monster affiliation and 032 142 144 stat line and the brand new obscure keyword obscure says when you use an action die this character is unblockable until the end of the turn why is this my fifth most favorite card in this set well an unblockable 4-4 by paying one and having bolt synergy is just super cool this card is awesome. I've really enjoyed playing this down and the power level of uh, just playing any beneficial action uh, on the same turn as playing this and then pushing for four unblockable. It's pretty sweet. This is uh, definitely one of those cards I recommend pulling out of the box, trying immediately and seeing what you think of it because every time I've played it, I've gone, wow, just four free damage. As long as they don't do something to push this back into the field, four free damage is pretty amazing. Moving on to number four in my list, a card I've talked a lot about about in a lot of my other videos lately. This is Istrid Horn Moneylender. Two cost fist character with the 012 022 133 stat line, the experience keyword, and the ability that says when fielded you may choose a global ability. If you do, it cannot be used this turn and any of its effects immediately end. I love this card, and the reason I love this card is not because I've played with it a ton and found it to be really, really good, though it is. I love this card for the potential of what it could mean going forward. We've been in like a two year, maybe even three year long cycle of direct damage teams sort of ruling the roost when it comes to Dice Master's competitive scene, and I feel like this card has the potential to change that up, or at least put combat damage teams on equal footing. Burn damage teams often rely on pushback or blink globals to keep your opponent who may be playing a combat damage team from just rushing them down with a bunch of attackers. This card has the potential to fit on some of those aggro teams or even just big guy combat damage teams and take away the ability of your opponent to just use a single global to counter your entire plan. Field this on the turn that you want to attack, or just field this on any turn and attack each time you uh, field this, and your opponent can't push characters back into the field from the attack zone because you've just turned off their ability to do so. I have a feeling this is going to make its way onto some competitive aggro teams that are looking for combat damage as a win condition, and I'm really hoping that it sort of levels the playing field going forward. Forward. That's why this is my number four favorite card from this set. Number three is one I've talked about a lot. In fact, I made a combo breakdown video with it. This is Volo Traveling Scholar, a two cost bolt character with an 001, an 011, and an 012 stat line. The experience keyword and the text that reads, when you field a character die with experience other than Volo, this character gains an experience token. Why do I love this card so much? It's not the most powerful thing in the world, but I had so much fun playing the Make Volo Giant team by just fielding up a bunch of really, really cheap experience characters. And each time you do so, you just make Volo that much bigger. It is incredibly entertaining to just field like 11, 11 Volos <laughs> and just see like there's three Volos in the field and all of them are 10 tens or something like that. And you just paid two for them. You have to invest a ton into it because you have to field all of these other experience characters. But the experience characters in the set and the adventurers in this set are actually just a ton of fun to play with. And so including those onto a Volo team doesn't feel like a chore. It feels sort of like a side quest or you know, like a, a secondary puzzle that once you solve it, you get <laughs> like 20, 20 Volos. It's really hilarious. And this is definitely my number three favorite card from the set. Okay, if you can't guess the next two, I am shocked because the next two I think are probably everybody's favorite or least favorite cards. We'll see. 
sound off in a comment below. But my number two pick for favorite cards from this set is the Godcatcher, famous walking statue. A three cost bolt action that says trap. And it triggers when you use an action die. And the effect says field a 10-10 Godcatcher token. And it has the text that says when the Godcatcher attacks, target character die must block this turn if able. Now I've talked about this card a lot and other people have actually talked about and made videos about this card as well. But I can't help but talk about why I love this card. Action dice that make tokens are really, really cool. And this is an action die that makes a 10-10 token that could easily just remove something that you hate out of the field each turn. Or if you had some way to clear your opponent's field, it could just kill them with two of these in the field. I've played games with this several times, and each time that I've played a game with the God Catcher, um, I've had this moment where I'm like, man, I could really do some damage. Or I could try to get more God Catchers in the field because that would be hilarious. And oftentimes I'll just lean towards the more God Catchers in the field strategy because it's hilarious. I think my high score for God Catcher tokens in the field is five. I think we were like one die roll away from having a sixth God Catcher in the field but I missed it by a little bit and then I pushed for lethal because the game was basically over. But the fact that you can just play this and then play a second one of the God Catcher and triggering the first God Catcher to give you a 10-10 God Catcher is just so funny. This card is awesome, and once the set comes out next week, I hope you enjoy playing along with this one. So, in the five spot, we had Drow Mercenary. In the four spot, we had Istrid Horn. In the third spot, we had Volo. In the second spot, we had the God Catcher. So, what does that leave? Well, duh, that leaves the Yawning Portal, Comfortable In. You knew this was going to be the first one. If you've watched any of my videos lately, you know this card is like on every team I've made recently, and for good reason. It's a two cost bolt action that says, your character dice are free to field this turn. Until the end of the turn, each time you field a character die, reduce the purchase cost of your dice by one. Dice you purchase this turn are added to your bag. Okay, this is not the most competitive card in this set. In fact, this is not the most competitive card on this list, probably. If I were ranking these by competitiveness, this might actually be more towards the bottom of this five card list. But why is it my number one favorite card from this set? Because this fundamentally changes a few things about the way that you're playing the game. This gives you another avenue of purchasing large-scale characters, which has been one of those things in the past that's been tricky, right? When building teams with larger purchase cost characters, we're always looking for some way to lower their cost. Things like clay face in a Cree captain so that you can pay two fists to use the Cree captain global just to make that six drop a little cheaper and easier to get to. Things like that. We're always looking for a way to drop the purchase cost on things so we can get them out faster, get them out easier, make them more effective earlier. Well, this gives you another avenue of doing that. It also allows you to put those into the bag, meaning that you have bag manipulation implemented within this same card. So you're subtly tweaking two fundamentals of the game within just one two cost card. And the best part is it's not a broken win condition like we saw another two cost bolt action in the past be. This is a way to buy things and a way to enhance your bag or manipulate your bag rather than just a way to win the game or change win conditions to make them more effective. And for that reason, it's incredibly fun to play. It's really, really cool to watch Watch other people play it as well. It does feel a little bad whenever they load up their bag with like four things and it's like the four best things they could get, but it's super fun to do it yourself. And uh, it, when this set comes out in a week, I know this is one that you're going to want to take out, slam down on the table and see what happens because it's absolutely incredible. So that is my list of top five favorite cards from the upcoming D&D Trouble in Waterdeep set. There were a lot of cards I had to leave off of this list. A lot of really fun adventurers and monsters that just didn't make the cut because for one reason or another I just enjoyed these cards more. But let me know what you think in a comment below. What are your top five favorite cards from this upcoming set? What are you most excited for about this set when it drops? What kind of teams will you put together? What will you play? Are you going to look for some cards that are more competitive so that you can grab them out and put them on competitive teams right away? Or are you going to try to build teams with just the cards from the set itself? Let me know in a comment below. If you really enjoy this content, if you like these videos, give me a like, give me a comment, give me a subscribe. All those things 
help push this channel up the algorithm so more people can see Dice Master stuff and make maybe they click and they go, ah, I should check that game out. All of it helps. All your support is absolutely needed and appreciated. As always, thanks for watching.